Now we've seen our Constitution trampled on in recent weeks with the passage of the Democrats' health care bill. And on this tour, we are going to be standing with average Americans like th that are here tonight that are saying enough is enough. Now, sadly, Democrats are now coming clean. They're telling us why they push for their health care overhaul. And it wasn't about, well, towering costs or extending coverage. It was about a dramatic redistribution of wealth theme here in America. Let's take a look. The question is, in a, in a democracy, where does the right balance between those at the top who are as 20 percent of the people do most of this consumer uh, spending and so forth and so on, and those at the bottom? And it, I, I think it has, when it gets out of whack, as it did in the 20s and it has now, you need to, need to do some redistribution. This is a form of redistribution. Everyone's entitled to adequate medical health care. But if you call that a redistribution of income, well, so be I don't call it that. I call it just being fair. Oh, just being fair. Well, it looks like the truth is finally coming out. And here with reaction to that and much more, a warm Utah welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Senator Orrin Hatch. Senator, how are you? It's good to see you. I think you're pretty popular still in the state, the state Senator. <laughs> Let me, let, me, let me ask you, first of all, I, I, I know the senator is here and your, your voice is a little bit shot. Well, I have, I have uh, laryngitis. You have laryngitis, but yeah. you're here. Don't worry, I'll fill in the gaps. I have a okay. very hard time talking, so it'll be, it won't be that hard. Um, you're in Washington. You've been there a lot of years. You've worked out a lot of deals. You've tried to reach across the aisle. You've tried to work with Ted Kennedy. You've tried to work with people. Have you ever seen it this bad? I've never seen it this bad, nor have I ever seen a group that is so arrogant that we have in Washington right now. It's absolutely arrogant. They're, they're actually Europeanizing America against our will. They're taking over banks, they're taking over car companies, they're taking over a number of other entities in our society and basically federalizing everything. And it's really starting to worry me. Plus, they're spending us into bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. They're actually, you know, when Obama took over, uh, we were $6.3 trillion, $6 trillion in debt. <coughs> national debt that was that came up to about fifty six thousand dollars per 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 family, family. it's now uh eight point three eight eight point two trillion dollars in debt and that comes up to about seventy six thousand dollars per family by 2020 according to obama's own budget we're going to be twenty trillion dollars in debt and that's a hundred and seventy thousand dollars per family it's a hundred and seventy thousand dollars per family you gotta to wanna to, you know how does america ever recover from that there's some interesting things al sharpton said this is socialism we just heard howard dean joe biden is out there saying you know look if you want to call it redistribution well i i call it being fair and it it sounds like that it's is it Marxism to each according to his need, from each according to his ability? Is there a label, collectivism, statism, socialism? The label even, labels even matter? How do you describe it? What adjectives do you use? Well, I like to call it the Europeanization of America, but it's a lot worse than that. They're actually, they're actually spending this country blind. You know, when they start, uh, they start uh, recognizing that terrorists have the same rights as American citizens. It starts to make you wonder when they come up with uh, special people like like the uh, new going to be top guy on the National Labor Relations Board, uh, Craig Becker, and they're just going to recess appoint him, even though all 41 Republicans said don't do it, because this man believes that he can he can put card check into law. Uh, even though through regulation, rather than having to go through the regular American process. You can go right on down the line, almost everything they're doing is a matter of real concern to me. Yeah. All right, so what, what, what are you to make of the president? You met with the president, right? You've talked oh, yeah. to him many, many times. You knew him in the Senate. I like him. All right, you like him personally. What, what is it, is this who he is? Is he, a, look, I write in my book, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. I think he's the most radical president in American history. I think in that sense, we've never seen such radicalism, and he seems like this rigid, really rigid, rigid, rigid ideologue that he won't listen to the American people. They'll, you know, literally, if it means that we say congressmen and senators voted on, on a bill that they never voted on, we'll deem it passed. We'll bribe certain senators to get their votes in some states. Is this all about ideology for him? Well, he's certainly the most liberal president we've ever had. And I might add that, uh, sorry about this voice, but I might add that no, you're he... doing great. He's yeah. doing great, right? Yeah. All right. We're going to encourage you, Senator. Well, uh, 
I believe that, you know, he's gone all the time from the White House. The people around him are all academics or bureaucrats. There's hardly anybody that's ever created a job around him. So that's what we're putting up with. And I might add that he's, you know, he's, uh, he talks centrist, but everything they do is left. Mm -hmm. And I believe they're, I believe they're actually running this country right into the ground. All right. Well, you know, that's a powerful statement for a United States senator. And by the way, you, you are not known as a firebrand. You're, ver you're known as a, a genteel person, somebody that reaches across the aisle. You were friends with Ted Kennedy. That is a very powerful statement coming fr from you to, to say that. When they now took over one-sixth of the economy, if the Republicans take back the House and the Senate, can they defund Obamacare? Will they, is that the next step before the 2012 elections? Well, keep in mind, they claim that they're going to provide, provide health care for 32 million Americans. Mm -hmm. 16 million of those 32 million are going to be pushed into Medicaid. You'll notice they're pushing more and more people into Medicare and Medicaid. That's what I call the Europeanization of America. Yeah. And I've got to tell you something. Uh, there's a method to their madness. The bottom 50% of this country pay 3% of our income taxes. The bottom 40% don't pay anything. They now claim, some people, that that's as high as 49% who are dependent upon government. I believe they want to get it to 60% that are and that's dependent. that's a voting majority. That's right. Well, by the way, Barack Obama did say the time for profits is not now. The time for profits is later. I'm like, is this America? Well, the, job, the time I, for profits is now, Senator. I want, because those people that start businesses create jobs. That's right, and Joe Biden's saying that you know, redistribution is, uh, of money is just fair. Look, it's not fair because they're taking it from those who work. They're taking away opportunities. Douglas Holtzik, the former head of the, uh, the Congressional Budget uh, Office, he, t he showed me a, a, a special, uh, special uh, economic chart. You and I and others that are maybe a little older, we had a chance of going straight up. This chart basically has these kids today maybe go a little bit and then it's straight across. Straight across. It's a, Their there's an iron curtain they cannot get through. Senator, you've been a trooper. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Arnhats, thank you for being here. Thank you. And coming up.